Okay, it's Emma We're here with Neuromuscular Treatments 1. We've got Ali now who's going to be helping us out today as we do our fifth demo session. And this one is going to be covering pec major and serratus anterior. I like to pair these two muscles together because as a group, they are very responsible for um, this forward shoulder position. And so creating length and dynamic motion in these muscles is a really big piece to dealing with a lot of upper body postural issues. So first thing we're gonna do with Allie is just come up with how I drape my clients. Um, oftentimes people like to use a chest or breast drape. Um, I find I can actually do a better job securing my drape if I just use my client's arms over the sheets. So the first thing I'm gonna do is come to the side that I'm not working on, and I'm going to grab my client's arm, slide it out, I'm gonna pull the sheets down just a little bit, and I'm gonna use her arm snug down on her side to secure the sheet on that side for me. And I'm gonna come to the other side. And I'm going to do a very similar thing to start. So now I just have her arms that are doing a nice job keeping everything in place for me. So when it comes to working pec major, um, obviously we have breast tissue and our female clients that we need to navigate. Um, if you have a client who is very chesty, um, depending on the client, you just are going to want to have some really good open dialogue with your client. And oftentimes what I will do is I will ask my client to use her opposite arm and just take her breast tissue and move it out of the way for me so I can access this tissue. And that way she is creating a barrier for me so I know where I can work that's okay and where I can't work. That works really well. Um, but it's completely up to your, you know, if that works for you. You can also do a really tight chest drape. Um, if you're going to do that, you're going to want to tuck it pretty securely underneath your clients. So first things first, as we always do, let's kind of go over what anatomy we're working on today. So with pec minor, we, pec major, excuse me, we break it into two segments. We've got the clavicular segment um, that's going to connect from the clavicle and then we have the sternal and costal segments that are going to connect down the sternum and around those lower costal attachments and come up. So we've got our two planes, that clavicular segment and then the sternocostal segment, and they're all going to come in and attach on the anterior aspect of our um, humerus. So pretty big, massive muscle. And then we're going to come to our serratus anterior. First off, I'm just going to kind of adjust my drape. So I'm going to pull this down and tuck really securely underneath the side of alley so I can access all this tissue. Serratus anterior is a muscle that attaches on the lateral body, on those ribs. It's going to go underneath the scapula and then connect to the medial border of the scapula on that inferior aspect. So if we were to look at a sandwich from the back, you have obviously skin. Underneath the skin, you're going to have infraspinatus. Then you're gonna have the bone of the scapula. Deep to that, you're gonna have subscapularis. And then right underneath that is where you're gonna find serratus anterior. So serratus anterior, when it's short, it's gonna bring the scapula and it's gonna wrap it around the rib cage creating this interior rotation. Whereas pec major, with its attachments here, whenever this muscle is tight, it's gonna create this internal rotation as well as adduction of the humerus. So really big components in chronic upper cross syndrome type of patterns that we're gonna see in our clients' bodies. So. First off, let's just start with some nice warming up of the pec. I, again, like to take control of my client's arm just like we did with doing pec minor, tucking the sheet in there, and I'm really lazy and I have a tendency to sit on my table a little bit and face my client. Um, I may start doing just some gentle cat pawing. I might even use some nice open soft fists and just kind of come in onto this pec tissue and walk around it. 
nice little compressions in there. When I have that tissue a little bit more warm, I'm going to do a little bit of pin and lengthen. I can use my knuckles again. Nice little shaking of the arms and then just taking her into a little bit of external rotation is just going to move that tissue underneath my knuckles. I could also do this with a broad forearm. Again, I'm not using my Olecranon process. I'm using the big blade, soft fleshy blade to kind of go across that entire length of the pec and just move that tissue out. I could also grab her elbow and do more of a superior glide through there as well. But again, the point is for this warm-up strokes, it's a very broad pressure and it's pretty light and I'm just moving that tissue underneath my pressure and kind of repositioning and moving through. And I also really like this as opposed to like my fists because as I kind of move a little bit inferior into this pec, that strong blade of my arm is a really nice barrier against any breast tissue on our female clients. And as well, be as respectful of the nipples on your male clients as well. So nice little warm up through there. Keeping good control of my client's arm. Notice I'm not letting it flop all over the place because otherwise she's going to help me. The next thing I'm going to do is get into a position where I can now do some of that more specific pincer grip work on this pec. Okay, so my favorite way to position my client to get at the pecs is to lift this elbow, support it. I'm going to walk around to the top of the table. I'm going to slide my knee up by my client and I'm just going to rest my client's arm on my thigh. And in this position, I can now use both of my hands if I want to grab onto this pec. So it becomes really obvious where it is. It's a superficial muscle. It jumps out. I'm just going to be right there. And now I can grab both of my hands and pincer grip that pec. So I'm going to do some kind of light work, lifting it up off the chest wall. I want to be able to lift it free of pec minor that's underneath it. And I should be able to get my fingers nice around in that pincer grip style. So once I've done that, kind of doing a little bit of feeling of that tissue, and then I'm going to come in for more of that ischemic compression. And I generally start kind of in the middle of where that muscle tissue is most available to me. And again, I'm not using the grippy, pointy parts of my fingers. I'm using a fairly flat grip here. You know, recognize that you've got your fingers really close to your client's armpit. It can be ticklish for some of them. The best way to avoid that ticklishness is to use a firm, consistent, not wiggling around pressure. So if I do have a sensitive armpit client, I'm going to take my upper fingers and press the pec towards the axilla and then just scoop and move away. It's usually the easiest way to get in there. And then again, nice, firm, slow motions. I'm going to hold that ischemic compression. Wait till I feel that tissue change a little bit underneath my fingers. I'm then going to walk my grip to another section of that muscle. And you can kind of roll your fingers if you want. And as I say that, I'm rolling my fingers like this a little bit to kind of see if I can dial in where I feel the most binding in that muscle. And then when I find it, I'm just going to pause there, relax my body, and hang out. When I feel that tissue soften, I'm able to sink into it a bit more. I'm going to move down that tissue a little bit further. And I'm going to walk as far as my drape will allow. And the nice thing about pec major is the trigger points in this muscle are almost all in this superior part of the muscle belly. So it's OK that we can't access much of the rest of it. Um, in some states, you can get permission to do breast massage. Um, it's a little bit of an ordeal, but it is appropriate in some places. 
Okay, so done through all there. I'm gonna come, I did not get these more superior aspects. So I'm gonna come up here. The trick is here is making sure that you're independent of the deltoid. So you can kind of fill your deltoid and just make sure that you're inferior of that. Any of those. So now that I've gone through this length of muscle of the pec, I'm going to go do that breaking mechanism again that we've done in so many other of these more rounder muscles where I'm going to grab the muscle and then kind of just alternate and jiggle my hands as I spread them and lengthen that tissue. So I start kind of in the middle of that muscle belly, alternate my hands and create that stretch. I'm going to slide, take control of my client's arm again. From this position, it's really easy to do a little bit of pin and lengthen in here. So I'm going to take a nice fist facing down towards my client, get a nice purchase of this tissue, and then externally rotate the arm. And so this is a little different way to lengthen out this muscle without me having to do a lot of gliding work. Let's get some nice rotations. I like to take my knuckles and start getting towards that sternum. My knuckles, that kind of ridge shape, is naturally going to fit in between those ribs. And that usually feels really good as well. Oftentimes, to get those better, you're going to want to grab the elbow and go into more of a superior motion with the arm. And come down. Finally, with this guy, I'm going to want to do a little bit of lengthening work. If I can find my lotion around my microphone and a little bit of oil. Again, I like to use my fists. Again, so my knuckles are moving towards the midline of my client's body. And I can glide down that tissue. And I can increase that work by adding a little external rotation. And I'm just pretty much keeping my hand steady and letting that tissue roll underneath my knuckles. I'm going to grab my client back into the superior position so I can get more of that lateral aspect of pec major. Nice and slow, just letting that tissue move. And if I wanted, I can always come back supporting my client's arm and I can come and use my fingers and do a little bit more specific work getting at those fibers. And as I do that, I feel that Allie has some limitations in this pec major as I get close to that sternal attachment. So I'm kind of going to do a little bit of work in there. It's pretty unusual for people to have actually referring trigger points here. But if I still find density in that tissue, I'm still just going to pause and wait. All right. So per normal, then the next thing we're going to do, so we've warmed up the tissue. We've individualized where this muscle is very easy with pec major. We've done our ischemic compressions. We've done some work to return length to this mushu muscle. Then now all we want to do is our little plus minuses to reset proprioception. So to do that, I'm going to return generally my client into a nice neutral position. I might even support the drape a little bit better. I'm going to, going to come. So we have finished doing some returning length to the pec major. Now we want to go and stimulate those proprioceptors in Allie and get them to reboot again. So we're gonna do again that plus minus action. That's the little upward glides and then lateral glides on all those attachments. And there's quite a bit of attachments on pec major. So the first one you're gonna to wanna to do is coming into that anterior um, humeral head. You're going to want to know where your deltoid is, kind of slide it out of the way, get deep in there, and with s some thumbs, some supported fingers, you're going to be going pretty firmly because you're going through some tissue there to feel kind of that bony structure, that nice bony ridge, and doing your little plus minuses 
right along there. Then you're going to want to come down to this clavicular segment. So the clavicular segment is on the inferior aspect of the clavicle coming down this way. So I'm going to just slide underneath there. You might find it better to use a thumb. Again, it's kind of like hands this way over the breast is a little dodgy. So I usually like to make sure that my fingers are rolled up in a place where they won't accidentally make contact. Um, then I'm going to slide kind of underneath that blade of the clavicle and just do my little plus minuses there. This tissue can be really sensitive and oftentimes, especially as I get closer to the sternum, I might end up slowing down and actually end up doing a little bit of work through the pec major into some of that intercostal space while I'm there. There's oftentimes restrictions in there. And I'm going to come down and start migrating down the sternum, being careful about where my fingers are until I get to the line of my drape. I would really like to continue this work following down the sternum and then scooping around that eighth rib to follow all of that. But I'm going to do that with my client's permission and I'm going to do it over my draping. So Ali, would you mind if I work down the attachments on your sternum? What I'm going to have you do is take your hands and just create a barrier for me so I don't accidentally make contact. So with Allie doing that, I can come on the same side and do my pressure there, or sometimes I actually find it easier if I reach across the table and do the opposite side. So that's what I'm going to do for this really quickly. Nice scooping round fingers, and I'm just going to find that sternum, and I'm going to work right on that lateral ridge of the sternum and follow down it. This tissue so rarely gets addressed, and it's really important for getting the pec major to completely release. Then when I get down to where the rib cage starts to migrate out, that's going to be right about at the line of that eighth rib. And I'm going to follow that eighth rib, and I'm going to hook into that intercostal space and see if I can just glide in there and work my way around. And so I'm just following that nice little space in between the seventh and eighth rib. And as you migrate to the lateral part of your client's body, you're going to suddenly lose that feeling of the pec and you're going to be on a much more bony, firm structure. And that means you've gone past that lateral edge of the pec major. So thank you, Allie. And so your arms down. And now we're going to go for serratus anterior. So serratus anterior, as we talked about earlier, is a little bit of a tricky muscle to get to. I personally like to get at it with my client supine. And that's for a few reasons. Um, most prominently because when I'm doing serratus anterior, I have generally am deciding that it's a muscle I want to take a look at because there's problems, tension, going on with pec major or the shoulder complex being stuck in an internally rotated position. So I already have my client supine. And if this is the only muscle that I want to take care of that's on the posterior aspect of my client, I'm wasting a lot of time flipping them over just to get at this one single muscle. As well as the reason I like doing it in this position is I can really control this arm and I can use a downward pressure to get to that muscle. So to get at serratus anterior, I'm going to take my client's arm that's nicely supported and I'm going to just move it across my client's body and I'm going to support this arm so I have control of it. I'm going to take my arm that's on the side away from my client and I'm going to come into the axilla. So my fingers are in between my client's rib and the scapula and I'm going to first just start by sliding my fingers down in there and getting a feel of that rib tissue. So rib cage sliding right down around the side of it. One of the mistakes that we make trying to find this muscle is we come up high up into the axilla. Serratus anterior is going to be closer to around T6, T7, T8. So I'm going to want to get in there. And so with my fingers nicely scooped around this rib cage, I can gently move Allie's arm across her body just a little bit 
and then saw it back a little bit and I'm just getting a little bit of pressure on that serratus anterior. I'm not moving this hand around because this gets really irritating. Again, we're in really sensitive tissue and oftentimes this is a tissue that our clients have never had work before. So a nice, firm, secure finger pressing the tissue of that serratus anterior against the ribs and moving the arm nicely back and forth. So that's going to get the more anterior slips of this muscle and just kind of gently moving this back and forth. I'll reposition a few times and just migrate through this tissue. How does that feel, Allie? Feels good. You may get into a little bit of the lat. Um, that's totally fine. Ideally, we'd like to free the lat from the ribs as well. So if you end up going a little too inferior, that's just fine kind of maximizing some other things at the same time. So now that I've done that, I've worked on the more anterior rib parts of this, I now want to get in and get onto the parts of that serratus anterior that's going to be against in between the scapula and the rib cage. So now I've got to direct my finger pressure down towards the table. So earlier I had my finger pressure pulling up onto that rib cage. Now I'm going to want to take my other hand and press down and scoop out that inferior aspect of the scapula. So I'm going to support Allie's elbow now with my outside arm, have my inside arm be my working arm. And if you're not sure where that scapula is, pull your client's arm out and you'll feel this bone here. That's the scapula winging out. Set your fingers inside of that and then I'm gonna move my client's arm back across the midline of their body. And now my fingers are nicely sandwiched between her rib cage and her scapula. And from here again, I'm taking my finger pressure and now I'm pressing my finger pads into the scapula. And now I can gently move Allie's arm, kind of slowly, it's like I'm playing a violin almost with Allie's arm, back and forth getting that tissue to soften. And I'm gonna reposition my fingers as I pull the elbow away from her midline and go back in there. There's some really nice gentle motion. This is another muscle group that doesn't get stimulated, doesn't get touched very often. And so usually a little is more, a little bit of very specific thoughtful work is going to do more to change this tissue than doing a lot of aggressive or monkeying around sort of work. How does it feel, Allie? Good. A little tender, but good. Yeah. And this is almost always tender in anybody, whether the tissue is abnormal or not. Again, just because doesn't get direct contact very often. And then if you're here, if it's in what you need to do, you can always then rest your client's arm across their body and come down and you've got this great access here to get at the lats if you wanted to do some work in the lats as well. But we'll take care of the lats in another little demo down the road. So that is all the work that I like to do in a neuromuscular treatment addressing pec and serratus anterior, particularly for upper-crossed, rounded shoulder posture issues.